The Doorstep Library is a very small charity that works in West London in the Hammersmith of Fulham area to read and lend books and hear reading children of primary school age. And having said that, it's also a gateway to children's imaginations, the power of language and the freedom to choose a book that maybe not is the one, that isn't the one that you see at school. In a practical sense, what does that mean? Do people go into somebody's house and yeah, read for them? on the doorstep. We go out in pairs with a rucksack of books and a stool and if we're not invited into the house, we simply read on the doorstep. So in the winter we have a torch as well to make sure everybody can see what's happening. And we read and lend books and as I say, the children can read to us as well. And there's absolutely no restriction on what they do. If they love a book, they can hang on to it for as long as they like. If they don't, they don't have to finish it. And they also can discuss their choices and they're great little ambassadors, of course, for the world of books and their imaginations. When the project first started where we work at Wormwood Scrubs, um, Emily, who's in charge of us, and I went round to every house on the estate in a restricted area and said, knocked on the door and said, do you have primary school aged children? We'd like to lend books. And that's how it started. So you go as a volunteer and you read books. You've obviously always been interested in books, but you're now a writer. You've got a book deal yourself. My book's being published next February. It's not for children, so I'll have to keep saying that to them. Um, it's called The Butcher's Hook. It's set in London in 1763. It's a kind of coming-of-age story, but with quite a lot of murder in it. It sounds sinister, The Butcher's Hook. <laughs> I think it's... I hope it's funny too. It's definitely quirky and, and I think it's probably not the book people would expect me to write, but if I'm perfectly honest, it isn't the book I expected to write either. Sometimes people overtake and surprise you and your characters can do that. You've had a fabulous career. You presented Blue Peter, you've been an actress, now you're a writer. Will you continue with the portfolio career or is this it now? Are you a writer from here on in? I've always made a policy of saying yes to everything because I figured that the older I got, the fewer other people would be saying yes and pretty soon I'd be the only old person they could think of and that's paying off. But in all seriousness, writing is by far the most important thing. That isn't to say I won't do the other stuff because I absolutely love it. But the reason it's taken me so long to actually finish a book and put it forward for publication is a terrible combination of laziness and cowardice. And cowardice, I think, dominated. You know, it was very important to me and it went out under a pseudonym, actually, because I wanted it to just be the book and stand alone. And so, yeah, I've got lots of excuses about why I didn't write till now, but lots of reasons why I, I want everyone to know about it. And I'm really glad it's out there. I feel very lucky. It is actually quite courageous because once you've been very successful, it's hard to try something that you might fail at. It's also really naked. Everything else I've done in my professional life, I can slightly, I would say I like being part of a team. You can also put the blame somewhere else. You could blame the script, the director, the location, the setup. You know, even as an actress, there is a certain leeway that it's a team effort. So otherwise, you're not just standing alone. Writing, it's just from here to there. It really is the most revealing thing you can do, I think, certainly for me. And it, it did feel very scary, but once I got a taste for it, yeah, I'm certainly going to carry on. And it was a two-book deal anyway, so I've got to. <laughs>